Australia is about to get a new ambassador to Denmark, but this appointment's a bit special because Damien Miller will be the first Indigenous Australian to head one of the country's overseas missions. Now, this follows his successful diplomatic career at the Department of Foreign Affairs, where he started as an Indigenous cadet. Damien Miller is with us now. Damien, good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. Morning. Thank you very much. One of the nicest sinecures to get, I should think, it's Denmark. It's a fantastic posting. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm over the moon and uh, I've just come back from Europe, so it's nice to be going back to Europe as well. Take us through your history with uh, DFAT. Uh, you've been a overseas before obviously. Yeah my first posting was in uh, Malaysia about 10 years ago and most recently I was in Berlin um, but I spent a bit of time in Canberra as well doing a range of different jobs working on uh, Southeast Asia, on Afghanistan, doing a corporate role so a very diverse career in the department. One of the downsides if there is one of being in the vanguard is that mm -hmm. you're always pegged that way mm -hmm. so for example mm -hmm. when women for, for example you know mm -hmm. finally get appointed to boards or get the top job they're always spoken about as mm -hmm. the first woman. Is it a, is is it a burden or is it a pleasure for you to always be put in the context of, of being an Indigenous Australian? No, it's a great, um, great honour to be the first Indigenous ambassador and I've had a great sense of pride in the department about being an Indigenous staff member. We've got about 49 Indigenous staff in DFAT at the moment, uh, 12 are overseas. Um, so I think we bring a unique perspective to the work of the department. We work in all different roles in the department. So uh, no, it's always been a great sense of pride and honour and, uh, and I think it sends a nice message about Australia actually to have Indigenous representation all around the world and in Canberra. And how do you hope to, to use that uh, in terms of reflecting Australia's public face to countries um, like Denmark? My job is to promote uh, Australia, uh, the Australian government, our national interests, but also there's an opportunity to talk about Indigenous Australia, um, our history, our stories, our culture. And I know from my previous postings that there's great interest overseas mm. in Indigenous stories and history, uh, and I know particularly in uh, Europe. So uh, it'll be an opportunity to talk about uh, our stories uh, in Europe, and I, and I think in Denmark and Norway and Iceland there's great interest in, in, our, in, in that. You come from central Queensland, oh, I understand. Yeah. So tell me about your, your people and heritage there. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Brisbane, but my family are the Gungaloo. I'm a descendant of the Gungaloo people. We are from central Queensland, just outside of Rockhampton. Uh, my family uh, spent all their years in that, in that area. My grandmother um, was under the Protection Act in Queensland in the early 1900s. She was doing domestic service work uh, in Rockhampton, outside Rockhampton. And then she and many other family members um, moved to Rockhampton or then moved to Brisbane for work. Um, and I grew up in Brisbane. My, my father um, moved there many years ago. So we have strong connections to our traditional country. I was there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I had a chance to go and see some of our sacred places and it was just wonderful to be back. A any language still in your family? There is, unfortunately I don't speak any of it, but there is thankfully still some language uh, that's been retained and it's even been taught uh, in school, in a little school uh, in Banana from, it's a funny name, but that's where our family <laughs> is from originally. Um, They're and, the names you expect from <laughs> um, And uh, so, so some of our language is being taught to primary school students there. Small Banana or Big Banana, no, you're going to have to answer that. <laughs> Speaking of language, how, how's the Danish coming along? Uh, I don't have very much, I'm afraid. I can say hey and hey hey, which is hello and goodbye. Gee, you worked hard on that one. I did, I did. <laughs> that's right. It must have taken you all week. <laughs> so I'm, I'm determined to kind of learn a little bit of Danish uh, when I'm there. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a nice uh, show of respect to be able to speak a little bit of someone else's language. So uh, mm. there, are, there are many thorny issues and of course closing the gap of disadvantage mm -hmm. with, with Indigenous Australians is one of the big ones when it, when it comes to, to the, the differences between you know, white and, and black mm -hmm. culture in Australia still. Do you find you have to hold your tongue as a member of DFAT or that you have to rein in what you'd most like to express if it comes to your displeasure or even your, your praise for various things that might be going on? Um, I think in the department we all are allowed to have our private views about whatever issue, um, but I really do feel that we've made such incredible progress in Australia over many years. Um, obviously there's still a long way to go. There's a lot of disadvantage all throughout Australian communities and, and we need to work on that together. Um, but I think it's important that I'm out there promoting um, a positive and accurate image of Australia. So it's talking about the good news stories in Indigenous communities as well. So those who are achieving in whatever field, those who are doing well on the sporting field, um, the great successes we're having, but also not to shy away from some of the other issues that we're facing. And it's, it's to be, I think, to speak honestly and accurately. And, and as a government official, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm meant to do as well. Right, let's finish with a very important question, Damien. When's your first audience with Princess Mary? <laughs> but you I'm asked not, it rather than me. <laughs> I'm not sure. My first, uh, when I, after I arrive, I have to present my credentials to Her Majesty the Queen, yes. Margaret. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm sure there'll be a chance soon after that to meet the royal couple, um, who were in Australia not so long ago. And uh, 
I think, show a great interest in Australia, as do many Danes uh, yeah. and Norwegians and Icelanders. I'll look after three countries, so, uh, yeah. Well, you know that Princess Mary speaks it absolutely fluently, has an excellent language. I've been language. reminded of that, yeah. So can, can you pick it up, please? I will. I will. I'll go beyond the hay and the hay hay. <laughs> Look, uh, really good to meet you, um, Demi Millen, and congratulations again. Thank you very good much. Good luck. Congratulations.